Hello, welcome to the Inequality Principle. This is Mike Sai. Today, we are speaking on the black vote. Why the Democrats are losing the black vote and why they should never get it back again. Now, we have to give some background. I am considered to be in America a black man. Even though I'm brown, they consider me black for some strange reason. My hat's black, my shirt's black, but somehow I'm black too. I don't, I don't get it, but that's how our designations work in America. Growing up as a black man at an early age, you're told you're Democrat. I remember the first election cycle I've seen was probably Gore versus Bush. I didn't understand what team I was supposed to root for. It was like, it was like looking at the same thing, just called differently. 90s politics weren't the same as they are now, right? There used to be this thing where you, there was a rule where you don't talk about politics. Nobody usually talked about them. Nobody was outwardly discussing their political opinions. And looking back at the 90s time period, because we all have rose tinted glasses about our childhoods, maybe. But looking back at the differences between the parties, they weren't that large. From everything that I've seen, they seem to be minuscule differences on economic policy and what what they should do economically. I didn't really see anything morally or ethically that differentiated them. Put it on furthermore, Bill Clinton was the one who passed the Defense of Marriage Act. That's how in line our parties were back then. They were trying to protect marriage from the infiltration of GLBTQ, uh I agendas. That the Democrats were the ones signing it. He also passed immigration reform. Like, it's, it's crazy how much changes in 20 years. It's crazy how much changes in 20 years. All right. Obama did too, by the way, the porter in chief. But that's neither here nor there. This was back then. And these are where the seeds are planted when you're young and you're told that Republicans are racist and Republicans don't care about black people and Republicans don't have the best interests of you in mind. And the Democrats are the ones with John F. Kennedy who, who passed the bills that gave us the rights to integrate and supported MLK and did all these things. You're told this from a very early age. You're told these things for years, for decades spanning. And you attribute everything negative, even down to the Civil War because of the great switch and all these things that it was the cause of the Republicans. Then you get older and you start noticing certain things in, in the culture. You start seeing certain things. You're raised Christian your whole life, going to Baptist church and learning about God and the things that offend them and the things that upset them. And then you keep seeing these patterns emerge where the ones who are Democrats keep pushing these narratives and these ideas that are completely against God. I didn't even know which side supported abortion up until I was 18, 19 years old. I just learned what abortion was, and I'm like, why are we killing babies? I don't understand. Lo and behold, it was the Democrats who supported them. I didn't know. But when it was time for me to vote, Obama was running. And do you know the pressure you face as a black man to vote Democrat when the first black person who's ever running for that presidential office had a chance of winning is running? You have no choice. You you think you have a choice to vote. You have zero choice. You got to pick. You got to vote for Obama or you're toast, man. You're toast. You have no choice. The level of pressure as a black man in America to vote anything but D is immense. Right? It's almost the, the equivalent level of pressure it is to bl bring a black girl home. <laughs> that's something they don't want to tell you about. You want to talk about racism? Okay, let's not gonna start there. The level of pressure to vote D as a black man is crazy. But you're told always to do it. But there just kept being things that kept coming up. It was first, vote for Obama. Okay. Vote for Obama again. Okay. Things started destabilizing. They kept being these Black Lives Matter riots and 
Then it was all this GLBTQ infused in the Black Lives Matter movement. Then it was Black Lives Matter headed by three black lesbians who are communists. Then they were funding their own charities and buying mansions in California. You realize, oh, this is just another scam group. And these people are created in order to make sure that there's no MLK or no Malcolm X that actually rises, that actually tries to cause social improvement in the black community. Because everybody can look at certain issues around policing and say, okay, if policing can improve, there can be more oversight. Nobody's going to disagree with that regardless of which side you're on, right? But why are you calling that Black Lives Matter? Martin Luther King didn't call it, call it Black Rights Matter. He called it Civil Rights. So if he called it a Police Reformation Act and said we need to reform these policies around policing, there needs to be more oversight, there needs to be more police accountability, there needs to be better training, who would disagree? And that would mean you would need more funding of police and more training, not less. Does it make any sense? So now you have crime pockets in cities where they're running around, destroying small businesses, committing crimes at a higher clip, taking over streets and and police precincts, and nobody's doing anything for months on end under Trump. Now, we get Biden in office again, and he is the most inept, illogical, Manchurian candidate I have ever seen in my entire life. He's obviously being controlled by everybody around him whispering in his ear. He reminds me of King Theoden when he was glued to the chair being being uh, leaded by the warm tongue dude, and he's just sitting there just a fu- statue saying whatever to do puppets to him. It's obvious this is occurring. Anyone who says anything differently is part of the problem. So, if you're a black person in America, you have a lot of social con- conditioning to undo. Now, as far as black women go, I don't know if they'll ever not be in favor of democratic policies because they're so entrenched into that feminist destiny child lifestyle that's been promoted to them. The can you pay my bills era, the um, independent woman era, the I don't need no man, all these black man ain't S word, all this stuff they've been told since they were five years old, growing up without fathers and liking men who are into gang activity or negative activity, but then complaining about the results they get from being with men with gang activity, but they don't want to be with a corny guy, so they'd rather be with these good for nothing men and then they breed with these men and then they complain about the results they get from those men not participating in their lives it's just an evil web that gets weaved over here it's just the evil web so you see all this and you come to the understanding you come to the understanding that voting d does nothing for you but it definitely makes your cities worse. And it definitely makes your affordability worse. And it definitely makes your living standards worse. It makes everything worse. And then you flee after you've completely destroyed your city. I used to be able to go to D.C., right? Back in 2016, 2015. I used to be able to go. Go to a little U Street bar, nightclub, whatever. Have a good time. Leave. Feel no danger. Feel no risk for my life or safety or any of that. Can't go there no more. Voted D too many times. Police are completely castrated. They can't do anything. And the streets are run by criminal elements doing whatever they want with nefarious agendas. And you have no ability to protect yourself. You're just going to be victimized if you go to D.C. Not saying it's going to happen every time, but it's definitely going to happen. You go there enough. So I see what happens when you vote for D too much. And all that happens is the people who are rich, who have enough jobs, who can work remotely, when it gets too crazy, it gets too hectic, but they just move to the to the next city, whether it's Dallas or whether it's Raleigh or whether it's somewhere in South Carolina or it's somewhere in Florida. They just move to the next red city and say, oh, it's all great down here. And then they do the same thing they did up there until it gets shitty 23, 20 years later, and then they just move again. These guys are incapable of learning from past mistakes, even though they are the smartest amongst 
IQ wise amongst the general population. The ones who can't leave are the lower earning individuals whose jobs are attached to the city and couldn't leave if they want to. They're going to make it a hellish landscape for you while they flee on their yachts and their planes to go wherever they want because their job is not pinned down by a location. And this is the lot they're giving you as a black person in America is to let them make all the mess they want, destroy your neighborhoods, destroy everything surrounding them, and leave you with nothing and perish into the mist when things get hard from the policies that they themselves instituted. They're not for your benefit. Guess what? When they're releasing the criminals into the street, they're not going into the white neighborhoods. They're going into your neighborhoods. And so for some reason, people believe that black people want criminals in their neighborhoods. When they don't. They don't want them in your neighborhoods any more than you do. There's a lot of citizens in there who just want to go about their lives and do their work and not be threatened by, about getting attacked and getting assaulted and getting robbed every single time they walk out their house. Well, that's the life they currently live in. It's a hellish landscape. I have grown with the knowledge and with the wisdom of time to understand that no political party is perfect and everything comes with their flaws, but the ones that are permitting or endorsing the values of Cain and Sodom and Gomorrah are the worst ones to institute and they shouldn't be followed. Is that easy? Break it down biblically, theologically, which one is promoting family and love and community and, and work ethic and striving to be something better than yourself and to improve your community and which one is completely, is teaching the exact opposite ethic. And if anything happens to them, then they claim victim. And, th and this is the thing about the gangsters back in the day, right? The gangsters back in the day, you watch, I know these are fictional movies, but you watch The Godfather and the senator comes over. He's talking to Michael Corleone and he's insulting him. He's like, I hate the way that you purport yourself. I hate the way that you conduct yourself. You act like you're a good upstanding citizen. And I know you're a piece of shit. And then Michael Corleone is like, yo, me and you, we're engaged in the same hypocrisy, but don't think that applies to my family. Right. But it's the acknowledgement that Michael Corleone knows he's a hypocrite that makes you respect him. Right. It's not the same as these 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 gangsters today who run around acting gangster and this and that, this and that, and this and that. And then somebody dies. It's a black person dies and they go, oh, yeah, victim this. You shouldn't do that. Black lives matter. Oh, you can't do. It. But y'all were just gangster five minutes ago. How are you going to how are you going to add all gangster and stuff? Do all these things, commit all these crimes, but then the minute something happens to you or one of you, you want to play the victim. How do you do both? Back then, they knew, hey, yo, this is the game. They catch me. I go to jail. I snitch. I die. Those are the rules. If I catch them, we beat them up, we tune them up, or they die. And whatever happens within that, that's the game. If you can get the lawyers and you can win on this side, that's the game. But that's it. And they respected the game. It is what it is. Nowadays, they can't even respect the game. They got to change the rules all the time. They got to get everybody else involved. It's ugly. Y'all don't even have honor no more. No sense of justice. No sense of street justice. No sense of decorum. Just It's just apes throwing poop. Speaking of that, I just watched War for the Planet of the Apes. It was good. And that's what they make you feel like when you don't vote Democrat, right? They make you feel like that, that donkey monkey, the gorilla who's working with the humans to kill all the other monkeys. That's what they make you feel like if you don't vote D. When I'm like, y'all the ones making music about killing N-words and, and, and raping and, and drugging people and, and beating people up and, take, and, and, and killing their mama and shooting their grandma's house. Y'all the ones doing that. But for somehow me speaking out against what y'all doing and what you're promoting and what you're endorsing and you killing your neighbors and y'all having these street beefs going for decades, just killing each other and you're not making past 25, I'm against black people. How does that make sense? How am I a traitor when y'all can't even live in the same neighborhood without shooting at each other and jumping each other and putting each other in wheelchairs? I ain't never put a black man in a wheelchair, but I'm less black than you because I don't want to vote D. Make that, make that make sense. And that's the logic that we live in in this world. Once you unplug yourself from that little 
accord you saying oh i ain't black because i don't want to destroy my fellow man okay fair enough fair enough fair enough that's what that means i ain't black because i want to get an education all right not not from these liberal schools because they're going to turn me into you but because i want to learn what i know is right that's attuned to my spirit i ain't black i ain't black because i'm against abortion guess what pharaoh used to do when, when the jews grew too strong he would go into the tents he would send his military people go into their houses and kill their firstborn children they don't even got to do that to you no more you can just do it yourself pharaoh ain't got to send nobody at you he just says hey yo there's this place over here you can just go take your kid there and kill him in the school and you just do it you don't care pharaoh got to do nothing Got black women t- protecting Margaret Sanger like she's some prophet from heaven. Y'all crazy, seduced by the devil. This is why the black community needs to continue waking up to who the Democrats actually are. They're evil, unprincipled, manipulative, demonic entities who are seeking control over your spirit and want to doom you into hell and everlasting hellfire with their confusion. Who want to mutilate your genitals and, and deceive your children and make you engage in sexual behaviors that give you uncurable diseases. Evil people. Doesn't take much to see it. All right, that's it. Mike Sai, peace.